I started getting short of breath. So definitely does um, attack your respiratory system and it hits it hard. So I think like those were, that was one of the worst symptoms because I woke up in the middle of the night and I was disoriented. I wasn't able to breathe. I had a very high fever. I also had started to pick up a dry cough. Those were the only two signs of, of anything the coronavirus. Unlike other colds and the flu that I had, there was no headache, no sneezing, no sniffles, no sore throat, no body aches. And even with that high fever, no chills and sweats that usually get that hot and cold. Um, I wasn't able to get anybody's attention. And I think at that point you start sitting down and having a conversation with yourself like, okay, um, this is it for me. This is it for me and my children. I won't ever see them again type of thing. Um, but I thank God that he was with me, um, was able to wake him up, wake my husband up to let him know that something wasn't right. Biocontainment was weird. I spent 10 days in there. I was uh, hooked up to all kinds of monitors. Anyone entering my biocontainment, it was like uh, Neil Armstrong landing on the moon. They had full biocontainment suits on, three layers of gloves, a motor in their back to provide air, uh, duct tape all around, sealing off anything that could possibly expose themselves. I'm quite baffled as why people are, are interested at all. I'm just this guy that's got a positive diagnosis but with no symptoms, stuck at home. But uh, I guess people are fearful and, and I, I'm sad about that. I think I'm proof that even if you catch the virus, you can, you can be just fine. When I first got here, they wasn't gonna test me because I didn't fit the criteria. After some CAT scans and a couple of tests, uh, they decided to go ahead and test me and they came back and they told me that I tested positive. My family is on 14 day quarantine. Um, I haven't seen my children, haven't seen my husband in, in days now. But there was nothing they could give me other than ibuprofen and gallons and gallons of Gatorade. Uh, I kid that I've been through every flavor of the rainbow of Gatorade multiple amounts of times. The light blue is the bomb. Stay away from the grape, that's nasty. There is no treatment for coronavirus. So what they're treating is they can treat a symptom. So if I have a fever, they can treat it with Tylenol. If I have a cough, they can treat it with a cough medicine. But my body has to fight it off. So I have to take the time um, to rest, um, make sure that I'm trying to keep down as much food as I can, and let my body do its job. I've been here, I think I lost about 15 pounds. So I don't know what I'm gonna be looking like when I get up out of here. I gotta get my hair done, y'all. Talk about my bonnet. It feels quite surreal to be part of this huge thing, actually. I step back and, and you know, realize that, you know, I see it's on the news, it just dominates the headlines everywhere. We were out there. There was a lot of hate that came at us. There were some very elaborate death threats that mounted and got worse as the days progressed, as people learned that the State Department was going to allow us back to the States. Everybody's making jokes about it. I don't take it personal. I think the only thing that kind of bothered me was like to see myself on the news, um, to see my local news station, you know, speak of this situation but not even know wholeheartedly like what was going on. It's a lot scarier when you see it on the TV or when you read about it um, than what it actually is, but I'm not gonna sit up here and pretend like it's a joke. Um, definitely has taken me away from my family, um, gave me some breathing problems and set me down for a while to reevaluate myself and kinda, you know, my life. And after this, you know, I want to get out and do more. All along, we were making lemonade out of lemons, looking at the glass half full, not half empty, living for the present, not worrying about the past, and also not focusing on the future, because all of that was out of our control. Stress is the biggest, biggest contributor to, to battling the immune system. And, and it's not good for the immune system. So keeping our stress level down was important. So just make sure that you guys are keeping your kids safe and you're keeping yourself safe as well. Um, that's the best advice that I can give anybody. Just make sure that y'all paying attention to your body 
your body will let you know when something is wrong. And if it's telling you something is wrong, then go ahead and, and get tested.